Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the voltage regulation of an AOR, uh, of a Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite AX. Uh, the board was provided to me by Gigabyte. The 13900K that I'm using for this testing was provided by Intel. Um, so big thank you to them for providing the hardware. The oscilloscope and uh, memory sticks that I'm using for this test uh, were funded by my patrons, so big thank you to them uh, for supporting the channel. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. So, the reason I'm doing this video is because I I was working on the PCB breakdown for this board, and this board uses a VRM controller that Gigabyte didn't use on their Z690 boards, because I measured basically all of the Z690 Gigabyte boards that I got. Uh, they all performed really well, and then this showed up, and I thought it was like the same controller they had on Z690. It wasn't. Um, so the question, well, once I discovered that the controller is different, it's like, is it correctly configured? The short version of it is, yes, yes it is. Um, in terms of what LLCs you'd actually want to use, um, depending on how much cooling you have, like if you have a lot of cooling, you're probably going to want to use like medium, well, high LLC is still not too bad in terms of voltage regulation. Turbo Extreme and Ultra Extreme, especially Ultra Extreme and Extreme, have just ridiculous amounts of undershoot. Um, so those are not viable as uh, for overclocking. I, honestly, I wouldn't even want to use Turbo LLC. Um, and, and like, high, medium, low, um, all, like, well, high and medium perform okay. Low and standard are really, really good, but standard... With a 13900K, if you have enough cooling, you're actually going to run out of uh, voltage headroom. Pretty Like, your idle voltage is going to end up sky high. So, you don't really want to be using standard if you're on a really good cooling system. Uh, but we're not right now. So, I'm on a 280mm AIO right now. So, even on standard LLC. Admittedly, I'm not pushing the, the cooling system to its absolute limits here. But, yeah, on standard LLC with 1.45 volts... Uh, the temperatures are just under 100 degrees in, well, uh, they're around 90 um, in the stress test that I'm running. So that's not just under 100. Just under 100 would be like 98. It's 90. That's, But the room temperature is also pretty cold right now. So, you know, like in summer, we'd probably be thermally limit. Like we'd probably be hitting 100. Uh, anyway, that's not the point. Um, yeah, so the short version is... Uh, like, if you have this board and you're wondering what LLC to use, don't use anything above high, uh, unless you've, like, completely run out of idle voltage headroom, which, considering that you can idle at, like, 1.45 volts and it's really not gonna hurt the CPU, uh, I don't really see a good reason to go above high LLC. Um, with that out of the way, let's get into, uh, taking a look at the voltage regulation. We're going to start with Ultra Extreme LLC, because that's obviously going to be the worst, so we're going to want to take a look at what we don't want to, don't want to do. Now, interestingly enough, this board, uh, or this controller, eh, board, I I've not seen other implementations of this controller, so I don't know if it's on the controller, but yeah, interestingly enough, this board on Ultra Extreme LLC still has a slight amount of e-droop, um, which is probably a good thing, because the voltage regulation on Ultra Extreme is not great. Um, anyway, so the idea behind this testing is very simple. We want the average, vol well, we want the minimum voltage to be as close to the average p voltage as possible, because your average voltage basically determines how much power your CPU pulls and how hot it gets, but your minimum voltage determines how stable it is. So if you have bad voltage regulation on your motherboard, like bad voltage regulation either because the VRM isn't configured correctly or because you, uh, or well, configured or designed correctly, there's multiple factors that go into that, but there's also the option that you, the user, go into the BIOS, set your LLC to ultra extreme, and then your voltage regulation goes straight to hell, uh, which is basically what we're looking at, uh, what we're gonna be looking at right now. Um, yeah, and if your voltage regulation is really bad because the VRM is bad or because you've set it up wrong in the BIOS, uh, you're going to be limited in terms of what kind of frequencies you can hit because there's going to be, like, your minimum... The voltage that the CPU is going to be getting is going to get very low for very short periods of time that do not show up in software. Like, all monitoring software that you can run on your operating system measures average voltage. It doesn't measure maximum, and it doesn't measure minimum. It measures average voltage, because it's way too slow to measure anything else. Um, right? So, 
Anyway, um, let's run some white crunch here, uh, small FFTs. So this doesn't actually look that bad right now, right? I mean, we do have some undershoot here, right? If we zoom in on, on what's going on with these spikes, I mean, we have the upward portion of the spike, but that's really not that, con like, that important, because, uh, yeah, but if we zoom in on this, I'm going to do a single. So basically what we're, we're seeing here is uh, Y Cruncher is happily doing uh, its, you know, calculations, and then the Windows event timer comes along, interrupts it, which causes the voltage to shoot upwards. Uh, then once Y Cruncher resumes, the voltage falls off a cliff, and that's how we get the bottom of the spike. But at this point, Y Cruncher is running. So if I had the CPU clocked high enough, this is probably where the CPU is going to crash. Um, it's not going to crash here because that's like, you know, steady voltage level. But this right here, yeah, that, that'll potentially crash the CPU. Uh, and then after some time, like, after some time, the, the VRM recovers. Also, notice the time scale we're at, right? We're at 20 milliseconds, uh, 20 microseconds per division. Um, so, like... This is why, like, your monitoring software is never going to pick up on this kind of thing. Like, it's just not going to show up. This is literally an event that happens in, like, 40 microseconds. Uh, your monitoring software has no chance of ever measuring that. Anyway, um, we're going to zoom back out because uh, we actually want an average of these. Or, well, anyway, so we're just going to let that run, and I'm going to reset the statistics. Right now, our average voltage is around 1.228 volts, uh, and our minimums are down to about 1.164, uh, which is not great. That's like 60 millivolts, I think, off the top of my head, right? Like 1.228 uh, minus 1.164. Yeah, that's like 60 millivolts. That's not great, um, but we can make it worse because I can touch the mouse. And... So normally what's causing that spike is just the Windows event timer checking that everything is, you know, that's how Windows checks that everything is running correctly. Um, right now the Windows event timer is actually running at its slowest rate, um, which is, I think, 16.4 milliseconds per, yeah, 16, I think it's 16.4 milliseconds. Um, but it can go up to once every millisecond. So, yeah, I'm not gonna... I don't actually have the utility for adjusting the Windows Event Timer installed right now, but if you're watching a video or something where uh, you want, like, smooth content delivery, the Event Timer goes up to a 1,000 uh, updates per second, basically. And normally it sits at 64 updates per second, which is a really awkward number. Um, like, <laughs> right? Like, your monitor's 60, but the Event Timer runs at 64. But anyway, um, yeah, like... It's just some number Microsoft came up with. Anyway, if we move the mouse, what's what ends up happening is the mouse, like the user input, is stalling out the Y Cruncher workload, and that is causing the voltage regulation to really suffer. Um, so actually, maybe let's take a look at some of that, because I've not actually... Oh, that was easy. <laughs> Didn't even need to set it that high. So we're going to pull that up. Um, yeah, that's not great. Though, and, and this will actually cause the system to crash. Like, I've done demonstrations of this in, in past videos where, um, oops, wrong timescale, still the wrong timescale, where I'd have the CPU, like, right on the edge of stability, and then you move the mouse, and the just, like, operating system processing the, the input of the mouse causes a workload to crash. So that's why you don't use Ultra Extreme LLC, because, um, yeah, like... Like, it's not too bad if we just leave Y Cruncher on its own, but as soon as the, the CPU starts getting interrupted by something more substantial than just Y Cruncher, it, I mean, just the Windows Event Timer, uh, yeah, it gets very upset. Or the VRM gets very upset about that. The CPU doesn't care. Um, the CPU doesn't care until it doesn't get enough voltage and then blue screens your system. Um, the VRM gets very upset and then the CPU crashes. So, um... Assuming that, you know, you're right on the limit of what, uh, of the clock speed. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, that's Ultra Extreme LLC. It's, it's not good. Um, we were seeing what voltages dip down into the, like, 1.13 range. Uh, which, yeah, that's just, that's just unusable, straight up. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's literally just unusable. Like, there is absolutely no reason to ever use Ultra Extreme LLC, um, except maybe for frequency validations, but even there, I, I kind of doubt it. Um, and by that, and by frequency validations, I mean taking a screenshot of CPU-Z. And even that, I think you might be, m might not be ideal. Um, oh, I've not tested it. The thing is, like, CPU, like, taking a screenshot is such a light workload that it doesn't, the, the transients aren't as bad because what causes the like massive upward spike and the downward spike is the change in current draw. So if you're not really like, if you have one core enabled and you're pulling t 10 amps to take a screenshot, it's not really a big deal. The, the thing is when we're running Y cruncher here with the E cores enabled, with the P cores enabled, it's probably pulling, actually, I think it's definitely pulling over 200 amps. So when that gets interrupted, that's, that's, you know, that's a lot of stored up energy in the inductors of the VRM that needs to go somewhere, um, which creates the upward spike. And the downward spike is the result of the, the just delay between the uh, CPU pull, like starting to pull more current and the VRM sort of not reacting to it instantly, um, as well as you have like the in inductance of the power plane as well getting in the way of that. Um, anyway, so let's do Y Cruncher now. Um, so if I'm not messing with the mouse, it doesn't really change the results much at all. I mean, we're instead of like dipping down to like 1.16, we're dipping down to like 1.18, which is a bit of an improvement. Though if we let it run for long enough, I think eventually we'll see it dip dip into the like yeah, well, like we've already seen it go into the 1.179 range. Um, average voltage is uh, again around uh, 1.224. It's a bit lower, but the thing is like the voltage regulator on the like well the motherboard only allows five millivolt voltage adjustments, so I can't get the voltage to match exactly between each LLC. We can just get them within like five millivolts of each other. Um, and this is within five millivolts of 1.228. Um, but yeah, so you can see over time it, it's dipped down to like 1.17 now. Uh, but let's move the mouse. Oh no, yeah. Uh, yeah, nope, Ultra Extreme LLC is also very bad. Uh, that is 1.14 volts. With like we're still averaging about 1.224, but yeah, that that that's no. So that's that's extreme LLC, also unusable. Um, which is the expected result. Like literally any mother, yeah, basically any motherboard you buy, if you max out the LLC, the voltage regulation is going to go down the drain. Because. Um, the VRM cannot react instantly. And even if it could, you still have to deal with the inductance of the power plane and the CPU socket. Um, though I am measuring from the actual motherboard, so the CPU socket wouldn't, sh like the effects of the CPU socket, like we can't really see them because I'm measuring from the back of the motherboard, not directly from the CPU because measuring directly from the CPU is really inconvenient. It is doable, it's just a massive pain, so... <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, so 1.315. If you're wondering how I know what LLC corresponds to which voltage to get roughly the same average voltage, it's because I pretest everything. Um, like, before recording this video, I just went through all of the voltages and got them all to match up um, for the average voltage, which you need to do, right? Because if you don't change the voltage to compensate for the extra V droop, your average voltage is going to end up being lower. Um, and that's one of the main reasons why a lot of people might think like, oh, if I raise my LLC, the stability gets better. Yeah, because you're dragging the average voltage up and your minimums do tend to come up with your average voltage. Even if they're re like even even if the gap between your average voltage and minimum voltage grows, it might not grow as fast as your increase in average voltage. So if you raise your average voltage by 50 millivolts and your minimums get you know 20 millivolts lower than your average voltage because you raise the LLC, that still means you have 30 millivolts more minimum voltage than before, right? Because um, you go up 50 and then drop down 20. Um, but that would be the same as if you just stayed on your pre previous LLC setting and raised the voltage by 30 millivolts, and that would achieve the same effect with a lower average voltage. Um, 
But anyway, um, where's White Cruncher? We're just going to hit White Cruncher right off the bat. Uh, right. I need to clear, clear the statistics. So now we're getting 1.19 at idle. I mean, 1.19 minimums. Um, though I think if we let it run long enough, it'll eventually get a bit worse. Uh, and then averages at around 1.225. So, yeah, so now we're seeing 1.18. Anyway, if I move the mouse, uh, things are a lot better, right? We're no longer seeing 1.14, 1.13 like we did with Extreme and Ultra Extreme LLC, but uh, it still isn't great. And actually, I think if I shuffle it around for long enough, eventually we'll see 1.15. Or maybe not. Um, that's one of the annoying things about doing this kind of testing is... Okay, I guess it won't hit 1.15 right now. But, uh, yeah, like, this is... We can do better. Um, the board can do better. Um, it can do a lot better. This board, like, actually, if you set... If you use, like, an appro like medium, low, standard LLC, uh, you can actually have the average voltage and minimum voltage on this board be within 20, 30 millivolts of each other, which is basically as good as it gets. I've never seen a motherboard do better than that. Uh... <laughs> Now, admittedly, there are some other boards that can achieve that, like, you know, small gap between minimum and average voltage at more aggressive load lines, but, um, it, like, but, the, like, that's not necessarily, like, that does technically mean the VRM is better. Um, that doesn't necessarily translate into a usable advantage, depending on the CPU, right? Um, cause if you, like, basically if you run out of cooling before you run out of, like, uh, average voltage, it doesn't really matter, right? That you can use a higher LLC, cause your idle voltage really isn't gonna hurt the CPU anytime soon. Um. All right, plus minus doesn't work on this. So, up next we've got high LLC, and this is where we start seeing actually, like, good voltage regulation without like, oh, but if you move the mouse kind of thing. I mean, it still is going to show up when we move the mouse here, but it's going to be uh, much less of a problem than at like turbo, extreme, ultra extreme. Um, It's honestly kind of cool to me that, like, you can get, like, uh, like, this isn't a high-end Z790 board from Gigabyte, right? And the voltage regulation is actually, like, once you're at, like, low or, uh, honestly, and, and, like, the voltage regulation's good, right? When, once you're at, like, appropriate levels of load line calibration. Um, oh, look, now we can no longer see most of the Windows timer uh, I mean, Windows event timer spikes, right? Like, there's no visible undershoot from those, mostly. Like, you can occasionally see one that dips down a bit more than some of the others. But for the most part, we can't see them anymore, which is really good. Um, so, yeah, high LLC, if we just left it to it like like this, it actually does a good job, right? We're within 30 millivolts of our average voltage. Average voltage is uh, 1.227. Minimums are at 1.2. So, that is a very good result. Unfortunately, uh, if we move the mouse, yeah, it, it, it gets it gets quite a bit worse. So, um, oh well. So high, but high LLC is like it's not unusable, but it's still not like you you know it's not. You're still there's still like twenty millivolts between you know your sort of no mouse movement minimums and your mouse movement minimums. So now we're gonna go up to one point three eight volts um, with a load line of medium. Yeah, medium. And so now now we're gonna start getting to the point where like you're even moving the mouse really doesn't affect the voltage regulation very much. Um, oh, 
I think medium LLC is probably what I would end up using on like a big custom loop. Because you would run out of cooling. Um, also, if you disable the E cores, your average voltage will go up because the E cores pull quite a lot of current. So, because what you need to understand about load line is it's literally just a uh, relationship between, like, the V droop is literally just caused by, it's not caused by. Basically, with the load line setting, we're telling the voltage regulator, hey, if you see a 200 amp load, lower the voltage by X, like, x amount right and that the x being the the llc setting so um if you have if you have your 13900k with the e cores enabled at 1.22 ish volts it's able to pull 200 amps but if you disable the e cores it's not going to pull 200 amps at 1.22 volts it's, it's just not going to do that anymore um so your average voltage will go up quite a bit um also, your heat output will get lower. Um, so, yeah, if anybody was wondering why I'm not a fan of the E-Cores. Though, to be fair, if Intel built a 12p core CPU, it would pull 200 amps at 1.22 volts as well. So, um, yeah. And your Cinebench scores would be lower, which would be, you know, just totally unacceptable. <laughs> oh, wait, we don't need hardware info. Um uh, anyway, so a bit low on the average voltage. Um, again, I can't get the voltages to match perfectly because the VRM only allows adjustments of 5 millivolts at a time. Um, but uh, yeah, 1.223, close enough to the previous, you know, 1.225, 1.228 that we've been running for the other LLCs. Minimums are down at 1.2 volts, so really no difference from high LLC. But if I move the mouse now... We don't dip down to 1.18. We dip down to about 1.19. Um, so this is very usable, right? This is like a 30 millivolt difference between our average voltage and like our minimums, even if I do move the mouse. I don't know. Can I maybe get it to 1.18? I kind of doubt it. Like maybe it'll do like 1.189 or something. But so yeah, medium LLC is very like... You can still see a small improvement by going down to, like, low, but this is very good. This is just straight up a, a very good result. Uh, a very, like, that's a usable level of LLC. Um, yeah. I mean, high also isn't that bad, but, like, the difference between high and medium is, like, 10 millivolts when you move the mouse, right? If you don't move the mouse, there's literally no difference, but, like... You know, maybe you want to, uh, like, check, like, because the thing is, like, let's say you're running, like, a multi-core rendering workload, right? And then you sit down in front of the system, move the mouse to, like, check if it's still running, and then it, and then it crashes. That would be incredibly awkward, <laughs> which is basically the kind of scenario that we're simulating here with Y-Cruncher, because... White Cruncher is literally just loading all of the cores to 100%, and then when you move the mouse, the the mouse input needs to get processed, and that causes the load to, to drop for a bit, and then re come back, and that causes the current draw to rapidly go up and down, um, which causes the voltage to rapidly go up and down. Um, anyway, so now we're going to go up to, I mean, down to low LLC, and at this point... Um, there really, like, isn't any more room for improvement, basically, on this board. Which is a good thing, because the, the results of this board basically match the results that I have for the Z690 gigabyte boards. Um... And so now if I reset the statistics, we can see that our average voltage is 1.226-ish, 1.225. And if, and our minimums are down at 1.2 volts. And if I move the mouse, nothing happens. It's great. I mean, it actually got like five millivolts worse, but <laughs> that, that is actually irrelevant. 
So yeah, low LLC is is just it, it it's it's as good as it gets. Like I've measured quite a lot of motherboards and I've measured quite a lot of GPUs and your average voltage and your minimum voltage only having a 30 millivolt gap between them is very good. I've I think there's like one or two things that I measured that had like 20 millivolts, but when it comes to V core power deliver like V core, th this is really really good. Um, yeah, th this is a this is a very solid result. Um, so low LLC is just like. I don't know that I would call it perfect because, like, technically, if you design... Like, I, I imagine uh, if we test some of the higher-end boards that I have for Z790, we might find that you can get similar results at a more aggressive uh, load line setting. But uh, I don't know that that would make them more perfect. It would just be like, oh, yeah, you can... Like, because it really... Like, we still have, pl in my opinion, you still have plenty of voltage re headroom on low LLC. Um, well, I guess you might want to use, yeah, if you have a big custom loop and you you do have the E-cores turned on, you probably would actually want to go up to medium. Um, which would give you about 45 millivolts more, actually, no, 35 millivolts more uh, load voltage. Um the the thing is is like oh yeah you get 35 millivolts more load voltage without having to raise your idle voltage but your like your undershoot gets like uh what is it like 10 millivolts worse so you again you go up 35 millivolts because you increase the LLC but you lose uh you know 10 millivolts of uh like to to basically undershoot so you only get a like stability improvement of 25 millivolts um and actually it might even be a less of an improvement than that because i am measuring from the back of the mother pcb of the motherboard right and the undershoot at the cpu itself is actually going to be worse than what we see on the back of the board i don't know how much worse but it is going to be worse because there's like a well, there's a motherboard and a and a CPU socket and also the substrate of the CPU between us and the actual silicon of the CPU. And the transient loading originates from the CPU. Um, so we're, we're kind of upstream from where the action is actually happening. And we don't see, like, we don't see absolutely everything from where I'm measuring. But yeah, so... Like, you're not going to lose so much voltage regulation by going from low to medium that it will be complete. Like, it won't completely negate the average voltage increase. But, um, yeah, I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't go up to medium LLC unless, like, the only, like, it, if I had enough cooling that I could cool, like, I don't know, 1.35 volts or something, um, which I wouldn't really recommend going above 1.35 volts load voltage. Um, especially if your CPU is at like 90 something degrees. Um, but it, yeah, so if getting to 1.35 volts required like an idle voltage of like 1.5, 1.55, yeah, I, I would strongly consider going up to medium LLC. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Um, Actually, I probably wouldn't want to idle at one. Well, I did say 1.5. I don't want to idle at 1.5 or 1.55. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, let's go up to 1.45, which is basically like 1.45 ish is about as high as I would be willing to tolerate the idle voltage. Um. Anyway, oh yeah, we're on standard now. So there. It's going off the screen. It's fine. We don't care about the idle voltage. Um. All right, I keep forgetting that I just have a shortcut on the desktop. And this, unfortunately, really doesn't make much of a... Like, so if I clear the statistics, right? So our average voltage is around 1.226 volts. 
our minimums are down at around 1.2. And if I move the mouse around, our minimums are still down at around 1.2. So yeah, standard and, and low, like I literally cannot measure a difference between them with this test setup. Um, so I'd say they're equivalent. Um, yeah, I, I would just consider these equivalent. I, I don't see a reason to use standard, like, yeah, I, I don't see a reason to use standard LLC. Um, low LLC, you know, you don't need to set your idle voltage so high. Um, and it really doesn't affect the voltage regulation. Medium LLC, you still get very good voltage regulation, but it is actually measurably worse by like 10 millivolts. Um, and then if you get into like high, well, high is basically another 10 millivolts, if I remember correctly from earlier in the video. I, I wasn't writing everything down as I went along. Um, and... Uh, well, above high, things just get bad, right? Like a turbo, you're going to see like 1.16 uh, minimums if you start moving the mouse around while Y Cruncher is running, which is what, like 40 millivolts below what we're getting right now. Um, so yeah, turbo, just no. Yeah, just no. No turbo LLC. High is is as high as I would go. Um, and then extreme and ultra extreme are just completely unusable. Um, anyway, that's, that's it for the Gigabyte Z790, uh, Aorus Elite and its voltage regulation. I'd honestly consider this a very, very good result. Um, because you can actually, like, set this board up in such a way that you basically don't have any noticeable... Uh, well, any, like, I can't measure any undershoot on low LLC, so that's, that's a really good result, right? Um, and even medium LLC is still very, very decent, um, or even very good, especially if you compare it to some AMD motherboards, or most AMD motherboards, actually. Like, I, I've had one AMD motherboard where the LLC actually allowed you to have enough V-droop that it wasn't, like, you couldn't have, you wouldn't have measurable undershoot. Um, so, yeah. Um, and honestly, that's, like, cool. That even on a board like this, which isn't top of the line, like, you have very... I mean, it's not surprising, though, because, like, Gigabyte has had this since, like, Z490 now. That, like, on Z490... I, yeah, because I tested Gigabyte Z490 boards, and they all had, like, the same voltage regulation performance. Um, Z590, I didn't bother testing. Z690, everything performed the same. Um, yeah, again, just everything performed the same. And now we have Z790, which performs like the Z690 boards did. Though, with these Z690 boards, I wasn't testing with the E-Cores turned on, so not necessarily comparable results. Also, that was a 12900K. Um, but either way, I do still consider this a very, very solid result. Um, so, yeah. If you have one of these Z790 Elite boards, uh, low or medium LLC are sort of ideal. If you really need more voltage under load and and you're like maxed out on your idle voltage which i find hard to believe these cpus pull quite a lot of power you can go up to high llc it won't it should it won't be too bad but uh yeah um that's kind of that now the next thing that i sort of need to test with this board is like is the six layer pcb actually able to hold up to um well, 200 amps shouldn't really be a problem, but more than that um, with the 13900K because it is a six-layer PCB. It could potentially have, like, the power plane could potentially get very hot uh, under, like, sustained high current load. Um, for this testing here, I've had a fan sitting on the board just so that the, like, power plane temperature doesn't affect the voltage measurements, that kind of thing. Um, cause that is a, is an actual issue is like, as the board heats up, the power plane gets more and more resistance. And so the back, like the voltage on the back of the board either will tend to drift upwards or downwards, um, kind of depending on, on the motherboard. Um, so for the sake of not having to deal with that, I've had a fan on the board the entire time so that the, the PCB temperature stays basically equal to room temperature. 
or at least very close to room temperature. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's it for the video. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, uh, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And I've also got a band camp. Uh, there's a link to that down in the description below as well. And uh, yeah, that's, that's now finally actually it for the video. So thanks for watching and... Goodbye.